Today I am going to teach you from Psalm 19. It's one of the best passages which talks so much about the Bible. I will read from verse 7 onwards. 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Please understand, the law of the Lord means the laws are the principles of Jesus, of God, by which he has made the universe. These laws he has put, put down in pen and paper that is there with us. So, the Bible is called as the law of the Lord. Please understand these things. The Bible calls itself as the law of the Lord. Now, it has a level of perfection to it. So, you read the Bible, you will know what perfection I am talking about. Even for inquisitiveness, you need to read this book just to see how perfect it is written. It is not written haphazard. It is not written, you know, anything and anywhere. See, sometimes people are wondering what this book is saying all about. But Bible is one book, you know. Even a child can understand. It is written in story form. It is written in story form. Do read the book of Genesis, Exodus, any story, any book, almost all the books are written in story form. Even philosophical books are written in a very sequential way. Those books which are very difficult to understand, even a child can read it. Whether he will understand is a different thing. He will understand everything. There are toughest, the toughest will even be understood by a child. That's why the Bible calls the law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. Means perfect. There is only one thing that's perfect. Everything is imperfect. There is only one being who is perfect. That is God. Earth is not perfect because we are living here. We made earth into a very, very imperfect planet. Okay. Please understand this. Earth is not perfect. The world is not perfect. Your institution is not perfect. You are not perfect. Your kandan is not perfect. Nothing is perfect. The more people are there, the more imperfection is there. The law of the Lord is perfect because it reflects God. God is the only being who is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. It reflects a perfection. A perfection means a completion. The 66 books which are there inside the Bible is a complete set. It is perfect. There is nothing need to be added to it. There is nothing need to be subtracted to it. There is nothing written in that which is not required. There is nothing written there which is apart from what is required. Please understand these things. Whatever is written there is required for us. What is not required for us is not written there. Many times, you know, people fool around with so many, so many incidences which is not in the Bible. For example, there are many movies taken around the Bible. Be careful about those things. They need not be taken because those things are not required. God has conveniently not written those things. There are many things about Abraham's life God has not written. Abraham lived for 175 years. If 175 years story need to be written in the Bible, it will not, it will consume, you know, several books. But God chose what to write, what not to write. About David, God chose what to write, what not to write. About Jesus, God chose what to write, what not to write. It is perfect. It is a perfect story. There are many parts of the life of Jesus Christ God chose not to write. You just don't use your intelligence and be more smarter than God in adding to the Bible. What is not required? Oh, please understand this. The law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. Conversion. See, nothing can convert the soul. People can convert, you know, uh, the religion. People can convert many things. But nothing can convert the soul. Soul cannot be converted. God is not interested in conversion of anything except the conversion of your soul. God is interested not in your religion. Religious conversion is not the agenda of God. In fact, religious conversion is against the word of God, the Bible. Bible does not promote religious conversion at all. In fact, God loves all religion. You need not get converted to Christianity to really know who God is. It is a futile attempt. Human beings, they, they want to do something. So they do a lot of futile things which are not really required. Bible is insisting on the conversion of the soul. The conversion of the soul is what it is impossible. Have you ever seen a man who says sorry? He will make everybody to say sorry, but he will not say sorry. He will justify what? See, a natural man, an ordinary man will always justify what he does is right. Look at a small child. He is a very good example. Usually small children will not say sorry, but God wants you are sold to be converted. Now, how to be converted? Many times we don't know what God is telling about conversion. Okay, I want every one of you to listen to what conversion God really wants. What conversion God really wants. God never wants a conversion of religion. This is the conversion God wants. Let me read to you Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. It says like this. 
Jesus is saying this, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will be by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. God is clearly saying, unless you get converted into little children, okay? Nobody teaches all these things. They will only try to convert the religion. I'll tell you something. And conversion of religion is useless in the sight of God. Conversion of the heart is actually God really pushes you into. Please understand this. You need to be converted and become like children. Not ignorant as children, but innocent as children. Because, see, you need to live an unassuming life. You need to live a life which is as good as a child. You get converted and be like little children. Then you are fit for the kingdom of heaven. Many times, you know, just by putting malas, nobody goes to kingdom of heaven. By doing lot of lot of things, nobody goes to heaven. They may go to hell in fact. But the Bible says if you get converted and become like a child, then you are fit for heaven. How many of you are fit for heaven? Today, people are very, very political. They are believers, but they are political believers. They, their behavior is wrong. There is a wrong behavior people have and they think they will go to heaven. No, Bible is very clear. If you want to go to heaven, there you should be converted like a child. Be converted like a child. That is what God is asking you. I'll tell you what can convert a man, a man or a woman. It is only the Bible. Bible changes the hearts, my friends. In my life, I have seen so many people. They have changed their heart. They have changed their old habits. They have become branded new people in their lives. It is impossible to see those things in the world. But in the kingdom you can see, you know, people are changed. They become like lamb. They become like pigeon. So harmless. Such harmful people. Such gunda gardis. They become like pussycats. They change themselves. I have witnessed so many people. They change their character after they read the word of God. My friends, you want to change? You are unhappy about your behavior? Some people want to change, you know. One day I met a young man who came and told me, Sir, I get so angry. I am angry with my father. I am angry with my mother. I am angry with my teachers. I am angry with my friends. I am angry in the morning. I am angry in the evening. I am angry in the house. I am angry in the college. Sir, I don't know what to do. I want to change. I want to be a man without anger. Do you have a problem like that? Have you ever seen in your life, hey, I want to change, you need to read the Bible. Because conversion starts when you read the word of God. My friends, word of God is not just a word. Bible says it's a living, it's powerful. It will definitely bring change in our hearts. God wants hearts to be changed. And God's change can come only when you read the word. My friends, today is a day where when you read the Bible, be open. Always it is easy to say I am right and you are wrong. My friends, what a, what a foolishness it is. Conversion of heart will happen only when you read the word. Only when you read the word, the conversion of heart will happen. That's why Jesus said, unless you get converted and become like small children, you cannot go into the kingdom of God. One more verse I would like to read. Psalm 51 verse 13. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners shall be converted to you. Sinners whose lifestyle is sinning. Now, sin, Bible calls many things as sin. Anything when you break the commandment of God is a sin. Sinners can find salvation when they converted into Jesus Christ and the word of God actually converts you, my friend. They convert you. So, so that's why, you know, conversion always is coupled with repentance. Conversion couples with repentance. Without repentance, there is no conversion. So there is a, something called as a repentance. Repentance means in Hindi, we call that as Paschata. In Tamil, we call this Manastabam. Please understand these things. There is no conversion without repentance. Repentance is a sorrowful attitude. There is no conversion without sorrow. A sorrow always comes with conversion. Please understand these things. You can be anyone. If you don't repent for the sins which you have made, you have not yet converted like a small child. You cannot enter heaven. So ask God, Father, help me to repent. Help me to be converted in my heart. You say like that to God. When you say like that to God, God will give you conversion. God will give you a change in your heart. You have a new heart from that point onward. It's very important. It is important. It is possible. My friends, you need to be converted. That's why Bible is given to you so that you can be converted every day. It is not once in a while. Some people think, you know, that's all. I have already am converted. Already I am repented. No, no. It's an ongoing process. Repentance is an ongoing process. Every day we need to repent. Every day we need, <coughs> we need to repent. 
Every day we need to talk to God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now there are there are two categories of people in the Bible. One is simple, one is wise. Now simple is not simple. Simpleton means a fool. Okay, that is an old way of saying you know simpleton, simple. Who is a simple guy? A simple guy is a fool. Okay, but the Bible says a simple man can never be made into a wise man. Proverbs twenty seven twenty two says, though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain. yet his foolishness will not depart from him foolishness is such a strong you know dirt which which immature people have with them foolishness will never go okay many of us we think foolish fools will become wise fools can never become wise that's why fools retain their foolishness they maintain their foolishness they continue to be foolish they never become wise but the wise are always wise foolish will never become wise but there is only one agent in the whole universe which can make fools into wise people that is the bible so the bible is given to everyone so that everyone can become wise in your life wise you can become wise bible is not given to a group of people for them to become wise no bible is given to the entire humanity so that the entire humanity can become wise wisdom will save you from the devil wisdom is not primarily given to you to save you from your neighbors no wisdom is against the devil it will save you from the devil devil should be finished first not anybody else so this book which is given in your hands it is given to you so that you can be wise for fools there is no there is no hope fools retain their foolishness maintain their foolishness continue to be foolish all their life but till they find the word of god the bible because the testimony of the lord changes a fool into a wise man so my friends which category you are in whichever category you are in please know that you can be made into a wise man when you read the bible bible is given to you so that it can make you into a wise man your wise man so that your wise man is always sought after wise people they go up in their lives they go very high in their lives wise people are terrific tremendous tremendous they go up very high wise people god loves the wise people god makes the wise people promoted joseph was a wise man he exhibited wisdom daniel exhibited wisdom the moment they exhibited wisdom they were promoted they stood before the kings when you exhibit wisdom you will stand in front of kings Bible says that the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple making the simple into wise people that is an old way of saying you know ah simple people can become wise people by reading the word please understand if you are if you want wisdom to pass to crack certain tough examination you need to read these word don't waste your time going up to people you know who who just you know rotating you who is just influencing you no whoever you may be you need to go after the word of god the statutes of the lord are right this is verse 8 rejoicing the heart joy is something you know it's so beautiful joy is rare happiness depends upon happenings happiness is always the surface level of happiness joy is the deeper level of happiness is called as joy joy always depends upon your heart condition joy will never change happiness will go up and down if happenings are not okay then happiness is not okay but joy always depends upon your state of joy that's called as a state of joy your heart is always at a state of joy in rejoicing it says the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart i'll tell you something when you listen to a man of god the words of god there is a rejoicing which will come into you it always comes that is called as the statutes of the lord there is a joy why you need to listen to me why you need to listen to the right men of god when you listen to them there is a level of joy which will attack you yes penetrate you that's why you know sometimes after the message you feel extremely happy your heart condition changes that is the that is the power of the statutes statutes is god's law in a human language god's law in a man's words it's called as statutes my friend it is important to you listen to the men of god the word of god 
it will rejoice your heart no one can change that the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart why you need to listen to me when you listen to me your heart rejoices i change the level of your accomplishment the level of your lifestyle the level your heart stands after you listen to me your heart gets elevated into a into a rejoicing mode it's true the commandment of the lord is pure enlightening the eyes enlightening the eyes the eyes need light why in every car there is a headlight neon lights white light why because to enlighten your path if you don't have light how you will walk many people are not able to walk right because they are not having light in their eyes their eyes are dark that's why it says you know the commandment of the lord is pure enlightening the eyes it will enlighten your eyes it will bring power in your eyes your eyes can see amazing it is all very true it is all extremely true today we should understand that god enlightens your eyes by the command now what is the commandment commandment cannot be disobeyed it has to be obeyed commandments are very important you know the 10 commandments there is no violation in the 10 commandments 10 commandments if you want you can read exodus chapter 20 you can read the 10 commandments there is no violation it will enlighten your eyes the commandment of the lord is pure enlightening your eyes it enlightens your eyes okay let me tell you one one commandment one commandment which you can easily apply okay everybody come from a family you need to honor your father and mother that's it you need to honor your father and your mother you need to honor now if you dishonor it will not be well with you many children they are wondering why i am not in nothing is well with me very simple you don't honor your father and mother no no i honor you think you honor but you have violated the commandment you may not have honored the way god asked you to honor please understand these things according to you you may have honored please understand this very clearly you violate the commandment of god it enlightens your eyes that's it it put light in you the commandment of the lord puts light in you the fear of the lord is clean enduring forever fear of the lord is clean if something is clean it is the fear of the lord that's why the demons are called unclean spirits unclean spirits the demons have no fear of the lord you become unclean when you do not fear god many many believers many leaders who are called themselves as believers they have no fear of god it's very interesting to watch people fear of the lord is clean it will bring a cleanliness in you fear of the lord when you don't fear god there is an uncleanness in your life unclean means there is no fear of god fear of god what is fear of god there are many advantages of fear of god just say fear of god and see the advantages in the bible what is fear of god let me tell you what is fear of god fear of god is not just to shudder in front of him proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 says the fear of the lord is to hate evil it has nothing to do with christianity it is to hate evil it has nothing to do with any religion my friends you can be in all the religion and be be a motivator of evil today many wicked people are so religious the fear of the lord is to hate wickedness the fear of the lord is to hate evil not only that to hate pride to hate arrogance to hate every evil way and to hate perverse mouth that is the fear of the lord the fear of the lord is this it is to hate evil and pride that's all anything evil anything pride you hate don't love hate that means you are fearing god that makes you a clean man a clean person a clean organization a clean family when you fear god fearing god is cleanliness is clean evil spirits do not fear god unbelievers do not fear god you know even arrogant people do not fear god very important fear of the lord is clean enduring forever see the bible produces a cleanness in you the fear of god in you please understand bible is not given to you to educate you regarding religion to educate you what you should be doing it is educating you about the fear of god when you do not have the fear of god you will do wrong and you will justify it today you go to a court of law so many people they have done wrong but they justify themselves as if they have not done that there are so many husbands and wives they are filing for divorce and you look at the divorce courts you know i'll tell you something it is they justify what they did is right what the other person did is wrong but let me tell you the fear of the lord is to hate evil who ever does it you hate evil many times we hate evil when other people do it but we do not hate when we do it 
will support it. Very important. You hate evil. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteousness forever. God is a ju righteous judge. Please understand this. This is something which we need to know. Psalm 7, 11 says, God is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. God is very just. And Psalm 89, 14 says, the foundation of his throne is justice. So, when you read the Bible, you understand what justice is. See, I'll tell you, justice is something which is very unique and very separate, very different from a anything else justice justice should be learned bible is given to you so that it produces the nature of justice in you many people are unjust they have one justice for somebody another justice for somebody world is unjust society has no equality we divide we discriminate on birth when a baby is born we say this baby is not equal to this baby wickedness it is. How can you say that? How can you discriminate on birth? Today, our religions have taught us to discriminate. Our religions have taught us to hate. Our religions have taught us to kill and do crime and still teach us. Our religion teaches us that God will support us. We need to change. We need to repent. We need to understand what is right and what is wrong. That can come only when you read the Bible. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this Bible. Father, none of us will go through our religion, O oh Father. We will go through the Bible, O oh Father. May this Bible be the foundation of our lives. May this Bible be the enlightener of our eyes, O oh Father. May this Bible bring light in our dark world, O oh Father. We pray that our, our hearts will change. Our life will change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Send this to your friends. Let them subscribe and like the, so that every evening it will be a time of blessing.